Hello everyone and welcome to Morning Coffee Break. Hope everybody's alright. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving and had lots of good yummy food and lots of good times with your friends and family. Oh, we had a really great uh, meal. Uh, I, I did a short of it. I'll, I'll put that out, um, I guess, today. Um, but anyway, uh, today is Friday, November 24th, Black Friday. And Logan and I were watching a, uh, oh, some kind of crime show thing. And uh, they were showing uh, Black Friday violence. And you just wouldn't believe it. I was I was shocked at some of it that I saw. Uh, this one woman, she wanted to get a, a game console like an Xbox or something, and she pepper sprayed the people in her way so that she could get to them. I don't know how many people got sprayed they, they, to clear a way for her to get in there to get to a, a Xbox. There was a stabbings. There were shootings. Uh, people trampled. Uh, one employee, I think, at a Walmart got killed when he was trampled. And uh, it's just crazy. You wouldn't see people fighting, uh, women fighting, pulling each other's clothes off, pulling their hair out, throwing each other on the ground. Uh, just crazy stuff. I just couldn't believe it. Uh, I mean, I know it goes on, but I never really saw anything like that that showed a bunch of different you know, incidences. But it's not worth it. I mean, it's not worth it to get something a little bit cheaper to, to be in a fight for it, you know. So we don't we don't go to all that Black Friday stuff. You can get a lot of stuff online. Uh, what do they call it? Cyber Monday or something like that. Um, you know, uh, I just I can't see it. I won't I won't be in a big crowd like that anyway. I I can't stand it. You know, and and plus, you know, COVID's not gone away. And you know, if, if you're you're you know, everybody was supposed to be six foot away from each other. If you're like in a, you know, you're mauling each other and stuff like that, some, somebody's going to get sick, you know, bound to. Uh, so it's just a big mess, if you ask me. I don't know what they could do to change things. Um, you'd have to pretty much have like some way of just letting one person in at a time, like a turnstile almost. I don't know if that would even work. But anyway... Uh, today there'll be a let's take a walk video. I took a walk yesterday on Thanksgiving. I figured I better get, get a walk in before we ate everything and I was miserable. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got that today and I showed the garden. Uh, it's doing real good because of the rain. Uh, something's eating half the comet sooner though, but the spinach is looking better and the lettuce is looking better too. And the turnips are looking great. But uh, probably either slugs or snails or whatever they are has it eaten up that uh, that comet sooner, really really bad. Um, but you know it's at, it's at the end. I'm I'm not going to worry about you know replanting or anything like that. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a nice little walk. It was a beautiful day. It's a little cool outside. Well, I never even mentioned the temperatures. Currently it's 39. High today is 51. Uh, no chance of rain and winds are pretty calm at three mile per hour. Um, so yeah. Uh, so once for dinner, we're just going to have like leftovers and stuff. Just, just, you know, make do with that and, uh, needs to be eaten up anyway. So I don't know if I'm going to have to, I think we got a little bit of everything. So I might have to have another can of some kind of vegetables or something. But anyway, uh, it's always good. I love Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to be trying this Twix iced coffee by Victor Allen's Coffee Company or whatever. You know, I tried the Snickers, and it was really good. So I'm wondering what this Twix will be like. Let's see. Nutrition facts. Wait a minute. If you drink the whole thing, which I'm not because uh, they want to try it. Uh, if you drink the whole thing, it's 220 calories, uh, total fat, 4%, saturated fat, 10%, cholesterol, 3%, sodium, 16%, 
17% of carbs, 4% fiber, 68% uh, sugars if you drink the whole thing. So, you know, I figured it would be like that. Uh, 5 grams of protein, 10% of calcium, 15% potassium, and that's it. I was going to get me a cup. Hold on. Okay, I've got some in my mug here. Wow. That does take something, taste something like Twix. I don't see how they do that. The Snickers one tasted a lot like Snickers. The Oreo one tasted like the mainly like the cookie uh, on the Oreo. That is really good. I like the chocolate flavor uh, in it. Uh, that's great. All right, for the Nutrition facts, I'm just going to give it a, a three and a half, let's say, out of five, and that's probably being a little generous because of all that sugar, but um, it's got carbs in it too. Uh, so anyway, uh, for, for flavor, I'd give it a five out of five, five out of five. Um, but, uh, you know, like I've mentioned before, this is something you want, want to drink every day, um, or maybe not drink all of it when you do even make it into two different uh, times or something. But, uh, you know, of course, that's up to everybody how they do. But, you know, I uh, I don't have to watch my sugar or salt or anything, but I do anyway. I always mention that. But, um, you know, I, I probably won't have another one of these. But I do like it. I like trying new ones as they come out. You know, and that's about, I, I usually... I don't think I ever buy them again, but um, that one is very good, y'all. It'd be something good for a treat, you know. Okay, how about jokes of the day, everybody? Let's see. Okay, this one's entitled Christmas in October. On social media, I posted, if anyone men mentions Christmas before Thanksgiving, I'm going to delete them. The next day, I didn't have any friends. <laughs> Isn't that, that's the truth. Uh, how about uh, covering the bird? We visited our newly married daughter who was preparing her first Thanksgiving dinner. I noticed the turkey thawing in the kitchen sink with a dish drainer inverted over the bird. I asked why a drainer covered the turkey. Our daughter turned to my, my wife and said, Mom, you always did it that way. Yes, my wife replied, but you don't have a cat. <laughs> you know, I was worried uh, when I was cutting that turkey up. Uh, I I had, was doing something with it, and Kitty got in here, and I thought, oh, my gosh, she's, uh, I hope she doesn't try to, you know, lick on that or something like that, and she didn't. Um, uh, she stayed back this way, and I didn't even get near it, but. I was keeping an eye on her because I didn't want her to, to do anything like that. But let's see. Fact of the day is the first Thanksgiving holiday. It was on October 3, 1863, that then U.S. President Abraham Lincoln declared Thanksgiving a national holiday. And wasn't that's right before the Civil War ended, basically. I think it was 1864, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Okay, I'm going to find us a trivia, and I'll be right back. Okay. I, I did an update. My phone had an update on it, and they've changed all the, like, icons and different things. They look different. And used to, like, to take a picture, there would be a picture, like, of a, like an icon of a camera. And now it's just a white circle, and it, it messes with me. I mean, and the other ones look different, too, so... It, I have to really look at what I'm doing sometimes now because of that. I get so used to the same way and then they change it. I don't know why they would change that like that, but I liked it better that it was a camera, you know, so you could tell you were taking the picture. But anyway, I thought this one might be good. Which object does Linus always carry with him in peanuts? 
teddy bear, ball, tricycle, blanket. I think everybody probably knows this. Everybody's seen uh, Charlie Brown and stuff. Um, tricycle, really? He's going to carry around a tricycle? Uh, it's blanket. Yes, Linus almost always carries his blue security blanket, which debuted in the June 1, 1954 strip. He held it over his shoulder while sucking his thumb. Ridicule of the habit is not a major concern for him. His friend Roy warned him at summer camp that he would have to be that he would have to be viciously teased for it, and in response, Linus used his blanket like a whip and sheared off a tree branch with intimidating power, saying, They never tease me more than once. <laughs> Next question. Which of these superheroes was also published as a newspaper strip? Superman, Flash, Spider-Man, Iron Man. Well, gosh, I don't know about being a newspaper strip. Um, wow, I don't think it's Iron Man or Flash. Um... But I'm not for sure. Uh, it's either, I'm thinking it's either Superman or Spider-Man. For some reason, I'm thinking it's Spider-Man. Well, let's see if I get it. Spider-Man. Nope. Okay, my second guess was uh, Superman. And that's it. Uh, Jerry Seagal and Joe Shuster dreamed of being comic strip artists at, one, at a time when before comic books had come into vogue. When their creation, Superman, was a sensation in action comics, they also got to write and draw his newspaper strip when it made it to papers a year later. I didn't, I don't remember that. I used to always look at the, you know, comics section, which they don't have anymore. Our paper, well, we stopped getting it because it's only like four pages now. It's like just one section. Come on. But they want you to do their online one and charge you a bunch for it. So that's ridiculous too. So, Which artist created Garfield the Cat? Otto Bender, Charles M. Schultz, Bob Kane, Jim Davis. I, I'm not for sure about this. Who created Garfield? I don't think it was Charles Schultz. I don't never heard of any of these really. Um... For some reason, I, I've heard of Bob Kane. I don't know if that's it or not. Nope. <clears throat> How about Jim Davis? Yes, uh, it's Jim Davis. Garfield is an American comic strip created by Jim Davis, originally published locally as John in 1976, then a nationwide syndication from 1978 as Garfield. Next question. I'm not doing too fantastic. What type of feline is Hobbs from Calvin and Hobbs? I, I don't even know what, I, I kind of recognize that uh, type of character, but what type of feline is Hobbs? A lion, a panther, a tiger, a domestic cat? Well, I wouldn't think, if it's this little kid here, I wouldn't think he'd have a lion or tiger or panther, so I'm going to say cat. No, oh my goodness. How about a lion? No. A tiger? It's a tiger. Hobbes, named for the philosopher Thomas Hobbes, is the deuteragonist of the comics. He is Calvin's stuffed tiger and best friend, who from Calvin's perspective is a tiger as real as anyone else in the strip. Well, well, I don't really know some of this but I'm learning things how about Popeye what is the name of Popeye's love interest in the cartoons I think I know this one Olive Strawberry Helga Sandra Olive Oil <laughs> that's funny your name is Olive Oil yeah Olive O-Y-L <laughs> that's pretty cool you know I never really thought anything about that when I was a kid. I, I, I probably didn't even know what olive oil was, but now it's kind of funny. <laughs> olive oil is an animation character made by E.C. Cigar 
1919 for his funny cartoon, thim cartoon Thimble Theater. The strip was subsequently renamed Popeye after the Mariner. I'm twist, uh, twisting things today. Mariner person that turned into the most well known individual from the cast. Okay, two right and three wrong. In Archie Comics, what is Jughead's real name? I don't know that. I know what Jughead is. Forsyth Pendleton Jones III. Dilton Donald Doyley, Reginald Mantle, Marmaduke Mason, Jughead, Jughead, Jughead. Uh, wow, I only th knew of Jughead. I never knew his name. Uh, Marmaduke Mason, Jughead, Reginald Mantle. The. The first one seems so outrageous it might just be it. Forsyth Pendleton Jones III. <laughs> That's it, maybe. Uh, Forsyth Pendleton Jones III, known as Jughead, is one of the fictional characters created by Bob Montana and John L. Goldwater in Archie Comics, who first appeared in the first Archie story from Pep Comics number 22, December 1941. Wow. He is the drummer of the Archies and is the son of Forsyth Pendleton Jones II. In one of the early Archie newspaper strips, he is identified as John Jugworth Jones. <laughs> it goes on. Oh, three right and three wrong. Batting 50, 50. In the Peanuts comic strip, who is Schroeder's favorite composer? Beethoven? Mozart? Chopin? Chopin, Chopin, C H O P I N, Chopin, Chopin, Chopin. Bach. Gosh, I remember him saying. I, I'm thinking it's of a B word, either either Beethoven or Bach. Maybe Beethoven. Yay, that's right. Schroeder often played music by Beethoven, his favorite composer, though in earlier strips he also listened to and played other composers' pieces, particularly Brahms. Okay, four right, three wrong. Who is the creator of the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes? Oh, I have no idea. Jack Kirby, Bill Watterson, Klaus Nordling, Walt Ditson. Hmm. Jack Kirby. Never heard of any of these. I want to say Bill Watterson. Hey, I got it. <laughs> As a guess. Calvin and Hobbes was a comic strip published by Universal Syndicate from November 18, 1985 to December 31, 1995. Uh, the strip follows six-year-old Calvin and his best friend, a tiger named Hobbes, we spoke about earlier. Five right, three wrong. Who is Garfield's owner? Charlie Smith, John Arbuncle, Ar Arbuckle, Jack Free, Peter Davis. I, you know, I never really watched much of the, the cartoons, but I did like read the comics a lot. Uh, I want to say John Arbuckle. Yeah, that's right. Hi, Kitty. Garfield is an American comic strip created by Jim Davis, originally published locally as John, and we already read part of that. Uh, do, 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 do. His human owner, John Arbuckle and Odie the Dog. Uh, world, it has the Guinness World Record for being most world's most widely syndicated comic strip. Wow, that guy had to make some cash, cashola. Six right, three wrong is the last one. Which comic strip is credited with naming the spiky tail of Stegosaurus? Naming the spiky tail? The Far Side, Calvin and Hobbes, Peanuts, Dilbert. I remember that Far Side was really, really weird stuff. And uh, uh, Calvin and Hobbes, it had that tiger in it they were talking about. Pe Peanuts, I don't think so either. Um, I don't think it was far side because that wasn't really all it was always different you know uh so they wouldn't have had something like 
I don't think over and over. I'm going to say Dilbert. Nope. So I got it wrong. Let's try far side then. And that's what it was. The athagomizer is a distinctive arrangement of four spikes on the tails of stegosaurine dinosaurs. These spikes are believed to have been a defensive measure against predators. Well, I think so too. Uh, the arrangement of spikes originally had no distinct name. Cartoonist Gary Larson invented the name Thagomizer in 1982 as a joke in his comic strip, The Far Side. <laughs> it says it was gradually adopted as an informal term. So, okay, everybody, I did uh, six and four today. Didn't do so great, but I learned a few things that I had no idea about. So I hope y'all enjoyed this morning's coffee break. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and share this out. And hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Everybody, I hope you have a great day, and I hope you had a great day yesterday. So thanks for watching, and check out uh, Let's Take a Walk later on. Bye, everyone, and God bless.